Hello, hello, and welcome to another Chinese food adventure. So this winter, I'm exploring Dongbei. It's the chilly northeastern regions of China. Coincidentally, also the region I'm currently living. And today brings me to a city I have never been to before. And actually at a latitude of 47 degrees north, it is the most northern point I have been to in China. It is, of course, Qi Qi Har. I know the latitude point seems random, but it'll be important later, trust me. Anyway, why am I here? Why have I come all the way to Qi Har? Well, the answer is of course beef. The best beef in China to be exact. Well, at least according to my taxi driver last night. But a lot of people online also agree with him. And apparently the reason why the beef is so good here is because of the latitude. I've done a bit more research on this and apparently the lower the temperature of the cattle, the slower the speed of accumulating fat, resulting in a higher quality of fat and better taste overall. So what does the city with China's best beef do with its beef? Well, they barbecue it, of course. Qi Qi Hara here is one of China's Shaokao capitals and some people even call it the Shaokao capital. I will be the judge of that. We are going to be eating Shaokao today, a lot of barbecue, but of course, Barbecue is best done with besties, so I brought my bestie along for the ride. Welcome to the channel, Xinye! It's me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Xinye, it's me. That was so beautiful and so unrehearsed. It's so good to finally have you on the channel. We are going to have the best time today in Titi Har. And because this is a food adventure, we're going to be doing it all. There are two main ways that people in Titi Har like to have their shao kao. Uh, so first off, we're going to try the first way, which is kao chua, barbecue beef on sticks. So for our first serve of beef of the day, we've come here to Jiangji Da Rao Chua, big meat skewer. Sounds promising. How are you feeling about first shao kao of the day? Honestly, I don't know because it's right next to like a funeral store. <laughs> is that what this is? <laughs> yes, but I, it's fine. It's yeah. fine. Don't even. The feng shui may be off, it. but the beef may still be. <laughs> anyway, since the name of the restaurant is Big Meat Skewer, that was the first thing I got to ordering. And let me tell you, these skewers earn their name. Such huge chunks of beef on there, also loaded with lots of fatty pieces too. Another thing that makes this beef skewer special is absolutely no spices or marinade are added. And oh my gosh, how amazing do these look. I also ordered some pigeon after seeing this at the top of the menu that says barbecue pigeon is delicious. Haoba, lai do lai. Oh, she's here. I was not expecting this. No, meaning it's like a, a deconstructed <laughs> pigeon. <laughs> you can see bits of rib there. Wow. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, this is what? This is the heart of the Oh, it's called chivalry. I don't mm -hmm. know, it reminds me of something, but I can't put my finger on it. You know what it is? What is it? It's pineapple. It is! It is an interesting thing that I have noticed in China that a lot of cities will have their own like regional sodas. Yeah. That you won't find anywhere else. Oh, this is here. <laughs> and you know me guys, I can't resist a saucy carb. So when I saw this on the menu, I knew it had my name all over it. Is this a little I feel like in Dongbei, when they say that, they mean that. When they say xiao, they, they mean that. <laughs> anyway, let's get stuck in. First, of course, with those beef skewers stacked with that famous Qi Qi Hara beef fat. Let's see how that fat tastes. Mm. It reminds me of Australia. Why? Mm. Mm. Man, it's been a while since I've had such a huge chunk of beef in my mouth. I forgot how much jaw strength is involved. I feel like people in Titi Hara must have very strong jaws. As I was saying, it reminds me of Australia mm -hmm. because growing up, one of the meals we would have at least once a week is just barbecued steak. Love our barbecues, dad would always be out at the barbecue. And the meat taste is very familiar to me. There's absolutely no marinade on this, but it's so flavorful. It's just meat that's been cut, put on a skewer and barbecued. I'm trying the fat now. And the fat is very flavorful. How's your fat? I love the fat. My favorite thing in um, Changsha is like the niu yu chuan. It's just fat. I will eat like 20 of those. Okay, now I'm super curious to try this deconstructed pigeon. I feel like if you were in the mood for like a DIY project, you could like reconstruct it. <laughs> Do you think this is one entire pigeon? 老板. 
，这是一整只鸽子吗？一只。Oh, he's just told us we have five skewers here, and these five skewers make up one pigeon. But now the big question: how to go about eating it? It's really yummy, but like compared to this like big meat, this is very small meat. <laughs> this is <laughs> <laughs> gotta work for it. And where the beef skewers had zero marinade, this had a lot. It was definitely a rich flavor, which I think is perfect for this style of eating. You know, picking around the bones versus eating a big mouthful of meat at one time. Do you mind if I have the last one? No, I don't mind. Do you want to order more? I'm kind of worried about this giant bowl of tuto. I think That's that true. might be filling. I'm going to make us a little carb feast. Half of this bowl will go into your bowl here. And then I'm just going to put some of this mixture together. This is a very Dongbei thing. Locals like to put it with rice. And it's just, it just enhances the texture, really. Look at that. Oh, it smells so good. Mm. Yeah. Mm. This is very nice. Have you ever had mashed potato like this before? No, not with the rice. This is like, it, it feels illegal. I mean, yesterday we were in KFC and you were dipping fries <laughs> into mashed potato, which I feel like is quite a similar concept. That was different. I was <laughs> embracing my xiao <laughs> tuo Do you want to explain what this is for my foreign audience? Because right now there's mm, a funny okay. concept happening in China where People coming from the south of China, mm -hmm. when they come to Dongbei, they're called what? Xiao Tu Dou. Basically, little potatoes. Why? Mm -hmm. This year, Harbin has been popping off. Like, everyone is coming to Harbin. Like, everyone and their dad and their mother and their aunt. There was one guy who, like, made a video and he was like, okay, how can you tell who is from Dongbei and who is from the south? People from South are like Xiao Tu Dou. They're little potatoes. Like they're all super bundled up. They're usually in like a white coat, like a white hat with like bare ears. Lots like, of white and pastels. And so they, they just like, someone from Dongbei was like, this is, this is so cute. Just all of these little potatoes. It's so funny because I'm wearing my head to toe black coat. That's why people from Dongbei are called Dian Xian Gai. Which is basically like an electricity oh, pole. <laughs> As a reference, this is what we're wearing today. You can pee a tudo next to me yep. for reference, and then pee a xian gan next to you for reference. And you can really see the resemblance. I mean, I am really <laughs> giving pole with this outfit, and you are giving tudo. <laughs> the funniest thing was when we arrived in Titihara Station yesterday, last night. And we get in, <laughs> we arrive and it's just a sea of black, grey and brown of people wearing their coats. Mm -hmm. And you have this pink coat <laughs> and these white pants. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna finish this off, get outside, enjoy the ice, digest a bit, and see you back tonight for Shao Kao round two. This is honestly the weirdest taxi ever. So we have arrived at our place for dinner. I was already a little bit nervous about coming to this place. This is it behind us here. Because, you know, when I go places, I don't wanna go to like just the touristy places necessarily. I, I wanna like maybe support a place that doesn't have as many reviews. So I found this place online that looks like it does really, really amazing looking Shao Kao. Everything mm -hmm. is prepared by hand before you. So I was like, okay, even though it's just got eight reviews, I'm still gonna go here. And then we get into the taxi and then it was the weirdest thing, right? Yeah. He immediately said to us like, oh, you're having Shao Kao? Don't go to this place. You have to go to... As soon as he was like, I was like, oh, mm -mm, no, this is a scam. It's not it. And then Senior had the idea, okay, let's go to the, their page online and just see like the reviews and stuff like that. And every single one of the comments was like, All of the reviews said the taxi driver Xiao Ge. <laughs> Nothing against this restaurant. I'm sure it's really, really good. But just be aware, if you're coming to Titihara, there is a taxi driver that's taking you to just like one place. Anyway, we are going to persevere and we are going to this restaurant and we are going to have a great meal. As soon as we entered, the boss greeted us. She was so, so sweet and really stepped us through how the Shao Kao works and what beef to order. As I mentioned earlier, this is gonna be a very different style of Shao Kao, but more on that later. Oh. Cool. So here they actually cut the beef for you fresh to order. This is what? So here we have our meat. 
Uh, they weigh it here. They then season and marinate the meat in front of you too. And within a few minutes, your beef is prepared and ready to grill. But we also ordered one more thing. It's called da pian rou, literally big slice of meat. And yeah, it's true to its name. Whoa, this is warm enough. Oh. <laughs> 这真的是大片啊,没开玩笑啊 So big, we actually asked if you could just give us half of it And here we also have all these 调料 自己做的调料,就是你吃的时候 Spiritual spices <laughs> And now for the very last item we need 这是什么? Oh. So there we have it, two plates of beef and a hunk of fat so the barbecue is at our table here. It's heated by hot coals, and the first step in this process is seasoning the pan with that beef fat. A few minutes later, you're good to add your beef to the pan. We went for the thinly sliced marinated one first. The juices are flowing now. <laughs> I'm like drooling here. You think so much beef, how much? The cost is about $68. Now to add another Dongbei classic to the pan, Suan Cai, pickled cabbage. She just said that we're waiting until the meat was done so that the meat oil can uh, then be soaked into the cabbage to make it even more fragrant. So it was time to get our spiritual spices ready for dipping. And there's two ways that um, we've been instructed how to eat this. The first way is just dipping it directly into these uh, spices. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I was curious to try that meat just on its own without the spices. Like this spice mix is amazing, mm -hmm. but even without any spices, it's so flavorful. I think that meat with those simple marinade mm, mm -hmm. speaks for itself. The other way you can enjoy this meat is by wrapping it in a perilla leaf. It looks like it's something out of Animal Crossing. It's yeah. giving Tom Nook. <laughs> so you get your Tom Nook leaf, add some beef and some of this spicy sauce and wrap it all up and eat it in one mouthful. That's good too. I loved our lunch and it was like very like big chunks of beef but when it's like a big chunk of beef, I feel like it's also like just a lot of work to like chew it. And I can, I have like a few pieces and I'm like done. But I love just like a good slice, mm -hmm. just a nice size of a slice. I yeah. get it, I get all the sauces, I get all the liao, yeah. I put it in a leaf and it's just bite after bite after bite after bite. I love perilla leaf, especially when it comes to wrapping like barbecue stuff. Because it gives such a nice, like, pepperiness, mm -hmm. I think. And I love how it's like, okay, so you have your beef, and then there's all of these things that are for jie ni. What was this again? Jie ge er. So, Dongbei hua is jie ge er. Putong hua is jie ge er. And it is root of the balloon flower. What's a balloon flower? Oh, they're so pretty. They're gorgeous. Wow. So we're going to eat its roots. It's like, inside it's like, crunchy and fragrant mm -hmm. and a little bit sweet mm -hmm. and then it's coated in this like spicy sauce really good this pickled cabbage is also another great palate cleanser between mouthfuls of beef so nice and sour and refreshing and i'm ready for more beef now <laughs> that's good to hear because we've got a big slice of beef going on the grill right now it's cooked to medium rare perfection and then cut into small pieces for ease of eating very beefy i think this is perfect for the leaf mm. Mm -hmm. And it's time to exercise those jaws again. Guys, no need for face yoga, just spend a week in Titihar and double chin gone. Oh, oh. 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 Wow, they seem to really like their pineapple drinks here in Titihar. I, I don't think I've ever had pineapple tea shui until I've been here. And we've had two in one day, two different brands. Well, cheers. Cheers. It's like sweeter. And maybe even more pineapple-y. But honestly, I like the one from the Zhongwu. It's a little bit syrupy. What can I say? The meat is great, the service was fantastic, and the only other customers I saw here were locals. Very happy with our decision to come here. I am feeling like I don't need to eat beef for another month. If you're in Titihara, why not come here? Right now, as of filming this video, it has eight reviews. Maybe we can get it up to 50. But thank you so much for joining me here in Titihara. Thank you for all the beef. You are very, very welcome. Um, but yeah, that's going to bring us to the end of today's 
food adventure. So thank you so much for tagging along. If you've been following me for a while, I would really encourage you to subscribe, press that button. Um, it would really mean the world to me. And of course, go and follow uh, Senior on all of her channels. I'm going to put it on the screen here. And uh, yeah, until next time, goodbye from TTH. Goodbye. <laughs>